so unlike uh, previous time where we did some questions what i thought was instead of trying to guess uh, what the board might ask why not cover the entire topic we'll go one step ahead try to anticipate what all questions could possibly be asked uh, and cover them up right so we'll we'll go that way so there's no auspicious stations to in today's topic as such we'll just discuss all the topics uh, um, everything that could possibly ask from oski point of view okay so that should help you uh, if any question is asked just yeah so starting from sternoclavicular joint going uh, distally sternoclavicular joint is a very rare oski question but uh, you might possibly be asked they might give you a clinical picture something like this where you can see a prominent sternoclavicular joint the entire clavicle may not be prominent at like this picture but only a part of sternoclavicular joint may be prominent that is a medial part of the sternum i mean middle part of the clavicle may be prominent okay and typically history they will give that uh, he had a patient had a fall or a trophy accident and complaints of pain and um, there is some lump there is some swelling uh, on the anterior part okay and we are also diagnosed so it's pretty simple from the history and the uh, investigations given but many a times they might also ask to giving the x ray okay so the radiograph now radiograph uh things that we need to see is always compare now the good thing is from the midline see the distance to the one clavicle versus the other now if there is a increased distance of uh the space between one side of the clavicle compared to the opposite side then this is no clavicular dislocation okay now this is in true pa or an ap view of the chest wall what they also can ask in oski is uh Number one, the types. The types we all know it is could be anterior or posterior. That is, the clavicle is coming more anterior compared to the sternum, or posterior. Now, uh, anterior is very common. Posterior is rare. Posterior is rare also because of the fact that this posterior to the uh, sternum, we have a lot of mediastinal structures. So most of these are high velocity injuries, and the patient might die immediately. Okay, because of the compression and damage to the important structures. Whereas the anterior ones, uh, mm -hmm. there will not be any such issues. There's no structure worth uh, getting uh, noted when patient can have an anterior sternum clavicular dysfunction. That is why entry is more common, uh, commonly seen. Okay, now posterior may be missed because the patient just didn't present to the hospital. Now, the other radiographic views that could be asked is this particular called serendipity view. It is simple: the patient is lying supine and the beam is projected about 45 degrees cephalic, in the sense towards the face. Okay, so that's how the beam is projected. Now, in this particular view, we can make out both anterior as well as posterior dislocation. How do we make that out? Normal, it will be equidistant. In anterior, the thing, the, the clavicle will go more upwards uh, in comparison to the sternum. And in posterior, it comes more downwards in comparison to the sternum. Okay, that's what uh, we need to see. So, uh, in certain this, this is of a normal patient. There's no dislocation here. Even from the midline, if you see the distance, the distance is equidistant so there's no dislocation so if this has gone up it is anterior if it comes down it is posterior okay so they might ask you they might give a serendipity view uh, image and ask you what type of dislocation also what is the treatment now anterior dislocation can be uh, managed conservatively you can even leave it alone if the patient is not too much uh, complaining of the complaints the symptoms okay it doesn't cause much uh, mechanical symptoms it's only a cosmetic issue but if the patient wants, you can give an attempt of close reduction. There are multiple manuals described. We can try to push it back in, uh, use uh, even a towel clip or a reduction force and push it back in. And if all these methods fail and the patient wants treatment, surgically we can uh, we could do an open reduction of the uh, um, clavicle into the joint and can pin it or even put a screw or even a small plate. So reduction and some internal fixation could be done. Okay. So that's all about sternoclavicular joint dislocation. Might not be asked, but uh, if we Look into the OSCE questions that have been asked over the years. Every year, I mean, the repeats are very, very, very less. Okay, so to get new and new questions, it becomes difficult for them. So they might just ask something out of the box, and this is one of that. Okay, so going more laterally, clavicle fracture as such, I don't think uh, could be an OSCE question because there are not enough questions that could be framed around the clavicle fracture. But definitely lateral and clavicle fracture, or more commonly an antero, I mean, um, acromioclavicular joint dislocation could be asked because there are a lot of things that could be framed around this. Okay, so we may be given a radiological picture or a clinical picture. In both of these 
so in a clinical picture the the lateral end part becomes more prominent and radiological picture may be as obvious as this or they might give an initial normal picture and in substation they might tell that on weight bearing uh, films it it pops out okay so that may be the history so look out for that again what do we need to look out for the the if you draw a line along the enter border of the clavicle it should match the enter border of the acromion okay so if it's not matching even if there is subtle difference then it is uh, ac joint dislocation maybe grade one or a grade two which might not be asked in the exams usually grade three or five will be asked in the exams okay superior uh, dislocation is what we so this is what it is. Now you might be asked of what the stress view in uh, AC joint dislocation is. Now mind, remember the stress view is not holding the uh, uh, holding the weight, but the weight should be left go free attached to the wrist. Because if you're holding it, then you're clenching um, your shoulder girdle muscles, which we do not want. So we want things to be pulled freely. So nothing, the fingers are not clenching anything. It is held at the wrist and it is um, both the sides we need to put in the weight. Okay, now this is a, one common mistake error that we do when we when we describe the stress test that only on the affected side the answer is no it should be on both the sides we want this to be pulled away from the affected side and this shoulder i mean the proximal humerus in the scapula to be pushed downwards only then even a subtle uh, difference subtle ligamental injuries could be picked up with this particular uh, radiographic view okay so this is maybe asked how it is to be done how it should be interpreted you could you could write that and the next thing classification we all know type one uh, is just a sprain type two is about 25 percent displacement type three is about 25 to 100 percent displacement type four is posterior type five is superior again but uh more than about 200 percent displacement and type six is inferior which is pretty rare so that classification may be asked and or they might give some of these images and ask you what these are okay so the hook plate um, can be used for lateral and clavicle fractures or even AC on dislocations. Problem with this is it can cause acromial lysis, right? That's that's uh, the commonest question asked with the hook plate. This is the so-called Bosworth screw. Now, Bosworth screw is not any particular screw. Any screw that is put from the top end of the clavicle into the coracoid process, into the base of the coracoid is a Bosworth screw. Okay, now this is also nearly abundant because as we can see, that it doesn't really do good. You might be able to reduce it back, but the moment you remove these screws, these, these come off, okay? Because mind you, the AC joint dislocations are uh, ligamentous injuries. So unless we tackle them, uh, things are not just going to fall back into place. So this is the commonest thing used, which is the dog bone plate on the under surface of the coracoid. We could see suture anchors, we could see endo buttons also, right? So these are the various ways of treating. These are all the suspensory uh, ways of fixation, and these are the rigid ways of fixation. Hook, uh, hook plate or a coracoid, I mean, Bosworth screw. Okay, so these may be asked uh, as a slide of what this is and how it is done, whatever. So uh, you could just add, or they might ask you the various treatment options. So along with these, we we have the ligamentous uh, reconstruction options possible, uh, especially if it is a chronic uh, AC joint dislocation. Okay, so moving on, um, if you get an x-ray like this, don't immediately jump into clavicle fracture. I, like I told, clavicle fracture might rarely be asked in your exams because number one, it is way too simple. Number two, there are not enough questions that could be framed. Now, remember that whenever a, whenever the uh, teacher or the surgeon is trying to frame question for OSCE around a topic, there has to be enough questions that can be asked for five marks, right? Otherwise, he, he just doesn't frame uh, that particular station. So clavicle is not enough. Space. So whenever there's a clavicle fracture, if given in your exam, always look out something is there on the scapula or not. You might not be given the other view in which it becomes way too obvious. You might be given only a simple view. So this becomes obvious that there's a clavicle fracture and you might, you might get on the wrong track. Okay. So this is a clavicle fracture with a scapula fracture. So this is the so-called floating shoulder. Hmm? Again, a very hot topic uh, amongst the examiners. Uh, theory as well as an OSCE. So again, very simple. So they might ask you, what is this uh, superior suspensory shoulder complex, SSSC? So it's a, it's a circular ring, the glenoid fossa, the coracoid process, the coracoclavicular ligament, the clavicle, the acromioclavicular ligament, and the coracoacromial ligament along with the acromial process. All these structures form a ring. So whenever there's a double disruption, so it's broken at two places, uh, this is considered unstable and uh, requires intervention. Okay, so that is what is a floating shoulder, um, double disruption of the SSSC. So 
you can draw this diagram if they ask you it's a, it's a very easy thing uh, to be drawn or you can just draw the circle and name the structures that form the circle okay if you can't and draw such a, a big a picture with the limited time that you get you could as well draw the circle and uh, um, briefly highlight what are the structures forming the circle it, it gives you a number of marks okay so can you please repeat this again sorry sir for same thing starting from the back you start so we have the uh viran for service is actually scapula okay uh, going forward we have the coracoid process of the clavicle we have the clavicle in between the coracoid and the clavicle we have the coracoacromial ligament okay um then acromioclavicular ligament the acromion process so all parts see we have clavicle coracoid process acromial process and the unit for the bony structures and the ligaments coracoclavicular acromioclavicular and coracoacromial right so these are all the parts of the sssp so you can just think around your shoulder what what all structures are there starting clavicle coracoid process acromial process these are the three important things and the back scapula we have which is the glenoid fossa and then the ligaments between each of these so these are uh, formed okay